All right, guys, welcome back to episode three of the Team Genesis podcast. Today, we got some good topics for you guys, starting out today with Synchro Storm and Bode, both coming out this month, actually, and I think 27th and the 30th, if I'm correct. So this weekend, pretty much, for both of them. Um, what do you guys think? Yo. Miss the floor is coming out. Baron de Fleur. Yeah, I'm thinking that card's gonna be huge for post burst of destiny, I think. And other decks being able to utilize it, I guess also. Really? That um, card's insane. Uh the other cards I'm I'm really interested in are the bird cards in Synchro Storm. I think those cards are pretty cool. Yeah, we've been uh we've um, been all testing a lot, especially on stream, like the Larissic version of Tri Brigade. And I think that version is going to be really, really good, uh, mainly because it kind of plays like Drytron. It has a bunch of different names that utilize extenders. And it's kind of like what tribrigade has been missing, right? Like up until now, we've only seen like a couple small engines, like Obedient Schooled. We've seen like the Zoo version. And we've seen the Pure version. Mm -hmm. And most of their plays are linear. There's not very much extenders, but with the Rhystic, there's definitely a lot more. Yeah, they yeah. seem very explosive very combo oriented yeah the other thing that's really good about them is that you get to um you get to play with them before you normal summon with any of the tri brigades so that's also what helps out that um engine um the other thing about the bird cards is that they just produce they also produce like an omni negate in the utopic before you really like get into anything so that's, that's another thing i really like about it Kind of forces out hand traps, and if they don't have it, then you get to put up the Omni Negate. You know, like a simple Veiler or like a simple like um, Imperm just doesn't end the turn, um, just like it used to in like the other variants. So, yeah. Zeus access is also super big. Like oh, dude. one Larissa just do a Zeus is insane. Yeah, the other crazy thing is that you can make the Nightingale and like three summons or whatever but then you can like stack like four or five materials under it and then put zeus and it's like six material zeus on like four summons so i think that that's really cool mm -hmm. six material yeah, yeah. It reattach that's all the lists. yeah oh because they reattach oh that's really good yeah that's insane yeah without a normal summon yeah yeah like you could all the lyrilis combos are like without a normal summon so like you also get to search the Nerval, so like you get to normal the Nerval. Like when you get to do your Tri Brigade stuff, it's after the Utopic feature. So then you get to normal Nerval, do your thing. Depending on what variation. Like for example, like I'm testing like uh like a more of a bird up version with like the the bird link three and like and Danny's playing more of a like a what what do you play instead of those cards? Like just more cards. I'm to playing go. all three right now. Oh, you put those. In I've there. I've like so. I so at first I was playing like a little bit of a Tri Brigade engine with mostly the Rissic and just having Tri Brigade as like the follow up. Mm -hmm. Um and then uh Tristan inspired like the the whole like playing like off of Dark Smorg after and not really relying on like uh Bear Brom. Um but then I found the extra deck room to be able to cut uh some cards and play all three so that you can choose either option depending on the matchup or the hand traps that you got used against um i think also coming with that um a lot of people don't really know what the new larissic cards are coming out with so they get a they get a spell card that lets them add or send a larissic from their deck to their hand or graveyard and then they get to special summon another larissic from their hand with a different name than that um they get a card that says when it's special summoned it searches for larissic spell or trap they get a monster it's that sp that targets one yeah. larissic in their graveyard yeah. Don't, don't forget to tell them there's two spells because a lot of people. Oh right. Play yeah. One of the other one too. Yeah. But the other one is just if you have like three Lyrilistics as an Xyz material, you get an upstart problem. You get a drop card. Yeah. Yeah. And then so. Lyr Lyrilists also do have a spell card that says uh, if you control a Lyristic, you can negate the effects of all monsters your opponent controls. Um, which is decent, but in testing, it hasn't really come up. Uh, mainly because you're already using your extenders to go into that. Um, but they get a the card that's really insane that allows them to kind of like play through nib or like have a utility play at the very end is they get this level one monster that targets a Larissic in their graveyard, special summons it. Uh, you're locked into Xyz for the rest of the turn. Um, but it also has a uh, an effect when it's uh, when it's used as a Xyz material. 
it makes the monster gain 200 attack and possession of that card can't be switched so it kind of plays out of talents too because they can't really take control of it um the decks like it it's follow-up is really good too and like just was saying crazy. Yeah. Xerxes is crazy. Yeah. Uh, yeah you want to keep, just keep explaining that one. Yeah, so their Xyz monster uh, is not once per turn, and it says when your opponent special summons a monster or monsters, you can target one of those monsters that were special summoned and return it to the hand, uh, which is insane because oh. it's not once per turn. <laughs> yeah, I, I read that one. Okay, yeah, that one seems very good. Yeah, and that's Xyz. usually the one at the end on the very end. Yeah, so the board usually ends on, like... What you usually want to end on is Utopic, Ancient Warrior. For us, it's the bird. And then you get like an Apex Avian. At least with me, you get Apex Avian. So yeah. that's kind oh, of like... So you're ending on the Samorgling 3? Yeah, I think that card is just um, so good in this deck. Because the thing is, is if they don't answer the Samorg with this... Like, because most of the time when they drop it, they're just trying to answer the rest of the cards because they have to answer the three negates or else you're going to have them back on your turn. So that's why I like Samorg, because if they don't answer the Samorg at the end phase, the Samorg will get a card out of my deck that will be the follow, mm. the guaranteed follow-up. And plus, like, the cards it points to can't be targeted. And I know the matchup isn't, like, as realistic as before, like, before, but Sky Striker, like, that, they can't, they can't anchor any of your cards. Yeah. Like, <laughs> they can't target them. Like, it's, it's a nice yeah, one. It's very hard for them to win. But it also, um, mostly because of Imperm and Veiler, too, is really important. Uh, that they can't hit your um, any of your cards under it, which is uh, the number one priority for me. They also can't tidying it, um, dragon, uh, and like a bunch of there's just a bunch of random utility where some more is just really really good, and it always gives you follow up, and it also can always be a negate. If you get nibbed, at least you get to end on like I don't know. Even if you get nibbed, right? Even on your fifth summon, you're just like okay, okay like either normal nerval, and then I get to just end with like uh ancient warrior and then the bird with the apex avian or you know what i mean like there's just so many more it gives you so many so much more in the tri brigade deck yeah especially have, yeah. go ahead sorry they have like a luna light vibe to them i don't know what it is i think mm -hmm. it's like something about maybe it's because like there's so much text and like second like second effects that you don't always know about like i remember with the luna lights like people would, like ghost over mst and then you would start you would still pop off so like that's how like the lira list stuff feels like it feels like even if you like veil or something they can still if you veil or hit the wrong thing they'll still go off so because like people don't know what they do i think you know if people are playing that deck in December time, I think they'll have like a huge advantage just because people won't know their decks, but that's still like a month away, so maybe people will know by then. I mean, yeah, yeah like as long as long as people don't know really like what they all do, it's really hard to interact with it, right? Like I think that is with just any any good Yu-Gi-Oh deck in 2021, right? But I think it's just such a huge advantage with this deck because it actually produces something through just one hand trap or two hand traps like it has the hand traps has to be so precise and you can't always tell you know what i mean what to hit so i think the deck will be good if the pilot's good i mean if you're a bad pilot obviously i don't think the deck will go as far as most people want but under some even i think even pure is really good um i just think the try adds more what do you call it versatility yeah and like the the play that that Tristan was kind of saying is that like the reason why you're able to utilize that so much is because like if you draw any tri brigade right except for nerval like you just search for the nerval normal summon bear bro or it's normal summon spanish fairy and then fairy special nerval special ancient warriors you use a nerval and the fairy to make the uh this morgue link and then you just have like three interactions plus and the you have at the end yeah and you still have follow-up because like because nerval search yeah that's the crazy thing is you get the nervous search and you get the Samorg, so like you're you're gonna get a lot of follow up too out of your out of everything after they even break it. It's nice. I think it helps a lot of tri brigades problems, where they only had like two pushes. While with this deck, they have you know two or three pushes before they get to summon a card. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, but kind of bouncing off of uh, this set is uh, we we're kind of talking a little bit about the the new secret coming out. Was it Baroness of Flare? Yeah. 
Um, and I know Landon and Tristan have been, and Darren have all been testing a lot of uh, Sword Soul, and I know that card's going to be very impactful on that. Uh, what do you guys have to say about that? That I can just say. Playing Sword Soul, as far as Flora, I think like as of right now it's only good in sword soul but like there's a roar on combos that are cool where you can end on like four negates off of just uh how can fibrax like i think later on konami's gonna try to make like more decks where you could throw that card in um, but as far as sword soul i think that card's really good it stops nib it's a pop uh, yeah it's crazy it burns whenever you summon it yeah. I, I don't know. I don't think that card's that cool. I think it's really messed up that now a, a Halka Fibrax can end on a Herald, a Baroness, and a Savage off just a Halka Fibrax combo off like a uh, freaking what's it's called? Colt Wing. Like that's so stupid to yeah. me. Like, that's why 001 is a problem. Yeah, you know, they, no, that spot, bro. How, I think I think Aurorodon, like producing those three tokens, bro, as long as that's around. Oh my god, that's just gonna be dumb, dumb stuff going around. Like, I don't know. Obviously, the decks. I, mean, I don't. I don't think Aurorodon is a problem with that despot. I just think anything that summons so many tokens is just is always going to be a problem to me. Like Link Cross. Like to me, like sure, Link Cross, the yeah. monster itself. I don't think you can problem, compare right? those two <laughs> though. <laughs> I know. I guess Link Cross because yeah. you know you had to make right with like you can use any Link two, I guess, right? Yeah. Or three. I, I don't even remember Link Cross as summoning condition at this point, but it's, it's just, just any uh, Link but, monster that's not Link one. But is there tokens. any other uh, tuner that can abuse Aurora Don's tokens though? Like, because yeah, then like if you if you take away like Despot her. one, is there anything to like, replace it? I don't think there I really guess. is. Like right, like because then you could keep Aurora Don, but then you just take away the Despot one, and then that whole like combo is dead, right? What about these pure Mecha Phantom Beast players, man? Oh, oh, what are they going to do? <laughs> right? Yo, for <laughs> real. They're not even at the watch. that one bro. desk bot player. Go, bro. Oh, true. The desk bot players. Yeah. Is the level 4 that specials two tokens? Is that a tuner? No. No. Oh, okay. Coatwing is not. The O oh, oh, is the problem. <laughs> Did you um, imagine? <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> talking about uh, the... Um, Oh man, what was it? The Hulk going into all those negates. One of the big things about that is Cupid. Yeah, level four synchro. Cool. Yeah, it makes itself a level three or four, I believe, and then searches any monster level eight or lower with 600 defense. Um, if we ever get Colossus back, that is a free Colossus. That's what the OCG is doing, I've seen. Um, Wait, do they have Colossus at um, OCG? Yes. Yep, they have Colossus at one. I would not be playing Yu-Gi-Oh if I lived over there. Oh my god. I know. <laughs> the and Colossus. Colossus. It's bad, dude. It's so bad. Two gamma? They like, just banned VFD off this you last can't gamma. Even defend too. Yourself no, they, they have gamma's one gamma at one. now. Gamma's at one. Gamma's now. at one. <laughs> two <laughs> they it down. Though. It was too good at two. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Tristan's dead. <laughs> We're in the superior region. <laughs> Sorry, that's just so funny. Just yeah, wait till you get to play in worlds, bro. I would never, dude. If in worlds you're just, I'm playing a combo deck, bro. There's no max C, bro. <laughs> that's true. There's no chance. There's no chance, bro. They have one gamma. They're like, you can't even defend yourself out here. Holy crap, that's nuts. I didn't know. I didn't know that. I didn't know gamma was yeah, that. It's, one. A, it's a very strange list over there, um, for sure. But yeah, Cupid. Uh, I think uh, I've seen Virtual World utilize that card. Uh, because it searches Lulu. Uh, I don't know how, yeah, 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 that is a random thing, yeah. Consistent, like, I've seen some Infernoble combos because it's a level <laughs> four. Uh, I don't know if it's anything, relevant. yeah. I think the best thing you like, best generic thing you can search over here is a really bad resonator card that says if you control a sinker, you can summon the resonator from your hand. Um, so how did the they make it's really cupid pitch again? I'm sorry, how are they making it? Uh, Deskbot 001. <laughs> Do they use a word? Broken. <laughs> yeah. Oh, crazy. So, yeah. so I definitely think that there should be a check here. I think okay. something needs We to should be just checked. ban both of them, actually. I mean, I don't know, because with Token Collector being put in a lot of people's side decks, like, after this weekend, 
I think, or not even this weekend. Yeah, after like when post boat, like when boat starts, I think token collectors can see side decks. So I want to quite play the cupid right when the format starts because that's going to be like really popular in everybody's side deck is token collector, and that's how I feel about Infernobles. nobles. Like if you wanted to play Infernobles, nobles, your time was every time before boat because token collector was just not a thing. But like I definitely yeah. think people are going to want to put token collector for yeah the ten e deck. Or the ten e uh, sword sold. Ten e sword sold. Yeah, yeah. They want to. Yeah. They want a token collector of that deck. So, True -true. I, I, like I said, I I wouldn't be playing in for noble after bode, and I wouldn't play virtual world with the cupid at the start if everyone has token collector in their side deck because it just because there's already very few cards that already hit virtual world right. It's like Nibiru, Gamma, and um ash right it's very minimal hand traps it's not like baylor and perm and it, those cards don't do shit dog crap against that deck it's pretty good right like because like by the time you get to hit one of their cards they're just like okay chain the trap pop the card your targeting effect resolves just open someone's crystal wing and you're like okay i'm fucked like so yeah i think cupid is cool i think it'll be around just not at the beginning like i mean people are obviously going to yeah. try it but i think people are going to like go away from it and then come back to it it's also a very cool card because it's a cool in air quotes it's a uh synchro four tuner that makes itself level five so you can make it with the two with the token and the desk bot become level five and then just make savage off that so you can savage before doing like cult wing stuff the card also searches for like Sangin, Teratop, Gildagra, Torga. I think it's search Sangin. Like, yeah. <laughs> There was the so the I think it was what the 2019 champion from Japan actually utilized a deck list specifically using just the combos from Cupid Pitch and made a deck around it, similar to like when like the Needle Fiber combos came out and people were just making like combos around it, and he utilized that and he played like Sangin and a bunch of other stuff just to like try to get into it like it, it, it can search so much it can search like psychic tracker uh it can search plas destiny hero plasma um it can search uh the the what's the crow the level two bird the dark one like the claw crow yeah it can, it can also search it can search black metal graves it can search wow. black metal like there's so many cards that you can yeah. utilize with it with this card coming out even like psychic tracker right like but for like level three decks like this card's just going to be an extender it's I think it's going to be really good we're probably going to see more in a couple of weeks but i don't think it's going to do anything at the very start of when bode comes out now say it with me token collector that card <laughs> is going to check every aurora dawn deck for a while <laughs> i'm just saying thank you. Awesome. i'm very i'm very happy sword soul came into the meta because now i don't have to worry about if people are trying to be sacky <laughs> with that card <laughs> Yeah, and Token Collector, it even has some, like, options, like, with Bode coming out, right? Like, even, like, I know this this, is really, this deck kind of sucks and, you know, so sad that this deck got support, but, like, the Beat Trooper deck got a card that generates a token, right? Like, random stuff that it could pop. <laughs> and then, like, yeah, you have, like, like you were saying, Aurora Dawn, you have, like, Swordsville. Like, it's a card that has, like, a lot of versatility in side decks and has that's good at maybe your locals could possibly even good at like high tier events if you're playing against a bunch of sword soul you know i'm just speaking of it, sword soul guys yeah oh, go ahead oh no i was just saying if i knew an infernoble player was at my locals that that card would instantly be in my side deck <laughs> i'm just saying <laughs> those all those guys deserve to burn in hell bro <laughs> <laughs> they summon connector and you're like go on Go ahead. Continue. You want to go, go ahead? Go ahead. Yeah. Go yeah, for it. Take it. Go what, what would you like to discard? <laughs> um, so, Danny, you actually brought up an interesting point to me today with Token Collector. Um, you were talking about how it's very good with shooting Riser Dragon. Yeah. Um, so, you want to elaborate on that a bit? Yeah. So we, so I was in, we were in the car ride going to locals. It was me and our teammate uh, Tom, and. We were kind of like talking about Sword Soul and like Token Collector, how like it'll have versatility. And then he actually didn't know that it could special summon itself from the graveyard. And he's like, bro, that's so broken. Like, you can just shoot and riser it and then special from graveyard. And I was like thinking about it, like, that's actually really good. Like, in like, think about this in Drytron, right? Like, you normal summon Diviner, make it a six, 
take over the Drytron, you make Shooting Riser, and you send Token Collector from your deck, and now you have, like, another card to stop, like, the matchup on top of, like, your field, right? If your b field gets Dark Rulered, you have a Token Collector to out the board, plus Heralds. Like, you have, it's, like, similar to what you do, what the Drytron deck does against uh, Tri Brigade, you know? It searches Lancia, still ends on a board, and still has Herald, right? Like, they still have, like, a blowout card to, like, stop the matchup, and have a Herald for worst-case scenario. So I I thought that was a really interesting idea. Uh, again, sh huge shout out to Tom because uh, I kind of stole that idea. <laughs> but yeah, like that was a really cool interaction, and I think uh, making it level three um, is also kind of cool in Drytron. Cause, okay, because I just thought about this right now. Now that we're talking about Cupid Pitch, right? Because then you can like you can make it a level three special Drytron secret into Cupid Pitch, and now you have a four, and then you can utilize the Cupid Pitch to keep secret summoning in the Drytron deck. That's interesting. Yeah, I'm like, just... <laughs> that is interesting. Um, I think, like, Beatrice dumping in VW, uh, you can dump it in that as well. Or even in Drytron 2, like, you have Beatrice to dump that on your opponent's turn. Or in uh, Dragon Link, shout out to Darren. You can go uh, Papega Ruler Mill 5, and it's just, like, a live <laughs> card in your 5 mills. That's true. Yeah. Another fire hit. Yeah, a lot of a lot of utility out of this card, especially in a format where graveyards are very important. <laughs> What's the Sword Silk think... deck? I've been hearing a lot of people talk about like the Ten Y variant and the Pure variant. Um, what are you guys' opinions on like the Ten Y versus the Pure? So, look, am am I gonna go or should we? Let yeah, Landon do it, man. Not yeah. Landon got it. Landon, you got it. I think Landon should talk about this. Yeah. Uh, I think that uh, the Sword Soul cards are crazy. Um, not. I think that the Tenny cards are really good, just because like, like they're just insane. Like you can just summon a bounce on uh, your turn and have it like back. But I feel like uh, having the hero card instead is definitely more relevant because the the hero card is pot of greed. So. Okay, this is my opinion. Of the can, day. Can I, yeah, okay, you go. Then I'll no, go. Dan, Dan, no, 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 Darren, I've been talking enough. You go, you go. Um, <laughs> the Destiny Hero sucks. <laughs> like, I don't know what more to say. I can't. <laughs> it sucks. Like, the card is good. Like, the card is, like, really, really good. But um, the cards that you have to play to accompany it, it's just not very good. And I think like the problem with one of the problems with the Destiny Hero guy is that when he pops a card on the field, like let's say if you're playing Dragon Link, for example, right? And then their disrupt is that they go uh Destiny Hero Fusion, pop itself, pop a card. Then there's that trigger that it has to do in the grave, and then you can gamma that. And then like it's just really like <laughs> so I don't know. Yeah. I will say this. I will say this. The pure the pure version and then the tenny version, right? So the pure version I think is more popular in OCG land because there's not maxi, right? Like and the thing is the issue with, with tennies in 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 OCG is like they reveal themselves. So when they get maxi, it's like you're eating a bag of dicks pretty much. Like there's not much you can really do. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I think that's why now if we bring it over to the TCG, it's gonna be the other way because tenny is Hey, I can go first. I can go second. I'm gas, and like, I'm just I have more things I can do into boards or making boards than the than my my counterpart the pure. And like pure, sure, you get to play like your little your your hero fusion. Like that's cool and all. Like you can go play your 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 like five bricks or whatever you want to call it. You go have a good day. The tenny deck is just gonna do what it does every freaking time because not only do they have more. Um, plays but their their sword soul cards are more live because they have more worms in their deck by a massive amount so i think that we're gonna see here that tenies are just better and like i think heroes like people are obviously gonna try to just slap in the heroes and everything like let's just be honest like it's the same thing as dragoon but i think people are gonna start realizing like hey like i hate drawing like my bricks and then they're like oh well it's a little different because i can just do it at the end of my combo but it's like 
you still have like two mirror like <laughs> destiny fusions in your deck like and you're gonna draw them after i break this and you're gonna lose and exactly and i think like I, I think the other thing is is that you have to look at it um is to like how many bricks you're playing to your deck right and like if you I, I don't know i i have this rule of thumb is that I don't like to play more than one Garnet. I would never play more than one Garnet. Like, Brilliant Fusion for me was kind of, like, the extent to that, and I can't... Hey, let's like, freeze. Um... Danny, what kind of orange juice is that, bro? <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> wait, 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 on, wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. We're, we're not moving on until he tells us. That's what I'm saying. Oh, what my God. Yeah. A great value. You, you're really going to make me look broke out here, bro. It's fucking Safeway brand, bro. <laughs> And what is this Safeway brand? Some people don't have a Safeway. Oh, you know. Shout out, shout out to Pano, baby. Let's go. Oh, the Pano. Pano. Shout out Pano. to my dad. He's been working for Safeway for 25 years. Hey. Wow. Get that 10% discount on this orange juice, bro. We out here. Dude, Safeway in Canada is like expensive. So I know what you're talking about. Everything okay. is expensive in Canada. This guy on his orange juice is like $2, bro. We take those. Bro, so, bro. but yeah, like the de so anyway, yeah, Destiny Heroes, like in theory, like yeah, it gives you more power, right? But like in a long tournament, like the ones we're trying to win, like the remote YCS, like maybe I don't feel like I have the balls to play five extra cards in my deck that could just be hand traps that are consistently good, or like five cards that are like droplet and tactics that are consistently much better than a fusion enforcer. Like, yeah, sure, it might steal me a couple games, but I don't think it's gonna steal me as many games as as many games as it's either gonna break me or not do anything and i think shu ping is the one who really like highlighted that point in his drive tron deck when he did play dragoon in that package because like instead of playing dragoon in that package you can just supplement it with something else and make sure that your board is still stronger right that you're able to play through things like hand traps so for the people who say like oh we played dragoon and and um phoenix enforcer because it's like our last you know play why don't you just find her a better way at you know comboing with your deck that plays through those hand traps and if it can't play through those hand traps then why are you playing your deck like yeah, that's I mean, mean to say kinda, but... like i mean it's like kind of pick your poison right like yeah what you, it's what like you want to lose to? okay they hit you well. the... okay find 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 a way within your engine to try to play around it don't like try to include extra cards for if that comes up you know what i mean like well it, it's like this like conversation that we always get where like people will come i went to locals this week and this guy was like to me oh you know i'm playing like this like combo deck right and like how do i play through nibiru and i'm like well, do you have cross out? And he's like, nah. And I'm like, okay. I'm like, so what does your combo do? So he starts showing me and I'm like, so basically you're just rolling the dice as to whether they have Nibiru or not. And then he's like, yeah. So, I mean, if you want to do that and that's how you play Yu-Gi-Oh, you can do that. In my opinion, <laughs> I see Tristan's face. <laughs> when you, when you're playing a deck, when you're choosing a deck, like, and especially if you're going to play competitively, I think the question that I always get asked too is like, how do I make this competitive? And it's the first thing that I would say when you're looking into that is compare it with the meta and the hand traps. Like, you know, com compare it with, with what's already in the meta and then compare it and see. I think if you just try to like obliviously say, I'm going to play Crusadia, because I don't care about Nibiru, and if I get Nibiru, I don't care. But if I don't, I just win. Well, you're just gambling at that point. So I, I don't think that's the right. It, way it's just play. not a good strategy to go to win a no, tournament. You know what I mean? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. And like, you know, I think we all play at like the local level. So like maybe maybe at like a bigger event. I mean, I don't think I've ever heard that at a bigger event. But at uh, locals, you hear that comment a lot, where like local players always ask. And this goes back to like my last point, where or last time we had a podcast where I was talking about deck building. It's so important, like you know, it's it's so important to to playing you. I don't know how many of you guys watch like progression series or like Simo doing all those like history Yu-Gi-Oh stuff like that. Not to like go off topic, but one of those. <laughs> one, Tristan, one of uh, Landon and I are big fans of the progression series, so we'll watch it and we'll only be like, "Oh, Gage sucked again this week." Shout out to Gage, but we're all Gage supporters. But um, 
Like, yeah. it's just Simo is the enemy of every of every series on his own channel. <laughs> it is. Yeah. It is. We go for MBT. We go for. Yeah, like nobody, nobody wants Simo to win. Yeah, (laughs) exactly, exactly. But it's like it's interesting when you watch those because, like, I think when you watch the way that Gage prepares his deck is like he plays right into something like okay, fine, fair enough. Maxi is a one of, and Simo is by God a god, and like how he draws that Maxi. But Gage has been playing into hand traps every single week, and I'm like, this is why you're losing. It's your deck building, right? So, and then you start looking at it, you know, even when you look at, like, the history of Yu-Gi-Oh! or things like that. Uh, Joe Girolando, that's really pot. I love his his series that he has going on, the history of Yu-Gi-Oh! He goes into cards and advantage, and, you know, when there was a heavy storm format, how many cards you should be setting... So if people do want to get better, like check out those series and check out like what people say when it comes to playing your cards, because those guys do an amazing job at like card advantage and like what cards you should be playing and like how you should be playing them. Because like I remember one time I was watching Joe and I think it was Mermail against. Yeah, he was playing against Pack actually. It was Pack against him and they were doing Mermail versus Firefist. And he like had a bunch of cards. He was playing. Joe was playing uh, Gear Gear, and he didn't set all his cards. He was like playing, you know. I'll set this one because you know if I set D Prison with Mirror Force, they're both repetitive. So I'll set the D Prison, and the Mirror Force is better for later because it's a bigger blowout card, right? So like just little things like that were so massive when it came to like the later game. So and, and that's what I'm saying when it comes to the Destiny Hero cards, like. When you're choosing cards, don't just play the like. I think DB Grinder said it. People will pick it up on release. I would sell it mine on release because later on, I think we're just gonna run into the same dragoon thing that we have. I agree. Yep, I'm with you on that. I do think there are a few decks that can make some good use of it. Um, you're a destiny have... hero, baby. <laughs> Yeah, I would say that's definitely a uh, <laughs> solid Might contender well for that be. deck. Not horrible. Um, I think it's actually pretty good in Sky Striker. Um, Striker and just too, slower yeah. decks. Yeah, I definitely agree. Slower deck. I know you know the slower the players who play slower decks are always like, oh, how come your combo deck just got you know you just got more into your combo deck or. Oh, you got talents now to play around hand traps. You got you got slow cards too that work for you. So yes. don't always be complaining. Exactly. It goes both ways. It really does. It does. Yeah. You're so funny. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, little Tristan grabs his water. Yeah, Sorry. I think it. I, I think it's. Uh, it's actually just full of uh, Safeway brand uh, orange juice. Yeah, so I think actually it was interesting. I again off topic, I know it is, but maybe we should we can talk about this at another podcast. But <coughs> deck building versus back in the day versus now, you know, back in the day, you know, combo decks weren't as prevalent like that you would have combos but not like there were like flex spots that you could put brick cards in now your brick cards have to be like hand traps right and when people put like the destiny hero cards into it i just don't agree because there's so many better things that you can be could putting into those slots like hand traps um things that help you go in go second i don't know like deck building for me is huge and maybe that's something we can talk about some other time but yeah, we should also deck talk. Is... We I have a lot of topics topics about that. If you ever want to get into it, just let me know. Uh, like what I, the best deck is? Yeah, absolutely. No, no. We I, think, I think a, a really good one is technical play versus deck building. I think that's a really good conversation. I think yeah. that one would be very interesting for a future podcast. Yeah, I could see. That. But not today, because we have a lot to talk about. Sam, what's uh, mm-hmm. what's next on our bode hit list? Oh, well, thank you for asking, Tristan. Um, our next our next topic today, we're going to talk about um, Flunderies. A oh. new archetype here. Speaking of we deck building. We talked about it before. <laughs> I know. We have talked about it before. I'm ready. Last, week, last week, or the week before last, we agreed kind of um, unanimously that the deck was not great and a little bit overhyped. Have we changed our opinions at all? So listen, oh, no one oh, else is oh. a believer. 
No one else is a believer, but I'm telling you, Flundries is a nice deck, and I'm going to tell you why. Because if that deck gets to do their little combo, they are always going to be guaranteed two lines of follow up through both both birds. The other thing, the other thing that's really good about them is that in the next set after this set, so not Burst of Destiny, but the next one, I think that's when that deck's going to get a lot better because they're getting a quick play spell that lets you tag your monster out for a um, for the field spell. So you'll be able to dodge. Oh uh, yeah. You'll be able to dodge the the cards that really end your turn, which is Impermanent Veiler. So I think like pre bowed you're gonna probably see like Droplets. You're gonna see Book of Moon in that deck because that's the way they're gonna be able to avoid those kind of effects. Are you talking um, about Battle of Chaos? Yeah, Battle yeah. of Chaos. Um. Yeah, that can. I that's actually a, never thought of Book of Moon in that deck. That's really interesting. Yeah, because you know, yeah, I pa packed it in a YouTube video. So you just like normal your guy. They go Veiler, <clears> and you book your right. card, and then it just still resolves. It's, well, you're telling me that champ packs books going are going to get more that's expensive. Cool. Fuck. It could, it could. This, I, it looks, I think it looks really too. good because you get this a book your opponent's card. How expensive? Ulti book is only Ulti eighty book? right now too. Eighty books. They're Market nice. watch though. But um, yeah, like in that deck, um, that droplet, all those droplet kind of has a not as good, but it helps dodge. But the thing is, is like, well, you have to have an extra bird in your hand to make up for the body that you're losing. So. You know, I think I think it takes a really good deck builder who's gonna have to figure out that deck because it's not like insane at first sight. You know what I mean? Like you have to pick between playing cards that help you play through cards, or you have to pick between that and defensive cards like hand traps, or you can play real traps. But my thing is, is like you have to pick and choose, and that's where it's difficult. Um, that's where the deck building have to come in. And I just didn't. I don't think um, between now and Denver, or even the two weeks prior, where we. Sorry. Oh, that was gross. But um, even the two orange weeks juice. before we tested, yeah, orange juice. Um, Safeway. Ugh. Three week, three weeks ago when we were playing Flunderies, like it wasn't even testing testing well. And I just don't think I had enough time to invest into that one deck if I'm going to be at a disadvantage the entire tournament because my deck is just going to not be built correctly. You know what I mean? So, I mean that's why I went away from that deck and into the two decks. I, I'm, I've been investing my time in mostly through the weekend has been the Tri Brigade Lyrilis deck in uh, Evil Twins. So I think everyone agrees with the Flunderies deck that if it does what it's supposed to do, it pops off. Are there consistency issues? Absolutely. <laughs> do you have to play nine pots? I don't know. The nine pots also conflict with each other, so uh, yeah. I only play six personally, but yeah. then again, you do, if you because my thing is I needed, uh, I wanted to play. I, I'm trying cross out right now in my Flunderies list, and I can't afford mm -hmm. to play all nine pots with cross out because I need to fit the other utility cards, and I'm, I don't want to play just one, 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 one. I'm at least playing two ofs. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. the deck building for that will be interesting. <laughs> For you, um, for you, Tristan, is it prosperity or your extravagance? Oh, um, I do extravagance and duality. Okay, They're the two so, I choose, and I okay. side so not prosperity. Yeah, and I side Starlight Road. Hell uh, yeah! Do you what? <laughs> that card's yeah. cool. I well, like that the thing, because that like, was like that was like super random. It was like sorry. Sorry. Sure. Sorry, I just think Starlight's really, really. Good. Well, my thing is, is Lightning Storm, right? Like, was like, everyone, uh, yeah, everyone's <laughs> starting to catch on to Lightning Storm, so. Yeah, everyone's yeah. back on Lightning Storm, so. Starlight is really good against Pure Trey. I guess you can summon Stardust with the Barrier Statue out. That's actually hilarious. Oh, big brain! <laughs> you can. <laughs> I know Danny had some text for uh, Flanderies. Uh, I mean, I guess Shifter doesn't really count as a tech at this point. It's pretty much standard, but... Yeah, uh, card, they, honestly, D so... To so start like off... Quiet Life. Shifter, yeah, so... <laughs> so, obviously, D Shifter's played in, like, you know, any deck that can play it. But looking into, like, the, again, the sets that are coming out, you have uh, this deck, and there's also a version that OCG was playing where they played D Shifter as well. Uh, and they were playing more of a pure without the Tenny, and I thought that was super, super interesting, because... That card looks like a really big blowout card right now, especially in the format that we're in, right? Like, if you can utilize playing that card, it's insane. But, yeah, bouncing off of uh, 
Sam, how you were saying some tech cards. So uh, a huge shout out to my Twitch chat, actually, for this one. Uh, we were talking about it before the podcast and asking questions and stuff. And the card Quiet Life came up, uh, which is like a blast in the past, because I haven't seen that since like True Draco was it like an actual relevant deck, you know, like. And that card is like a complete blowout. But again, if you're playing like the only downside of playing that is like Tristan's playing, he's playing duality, he's playing extravagance, right? That's like not a card you want to see off the rip because it has to be at the start of the main phase, right? So, I mean, it's it don't get me wrong. It is a blowout card. But if you don't draw at the start of your main phase, then there's no real way to really utilize it, you know, unless you're like stunning your opponent for like a deck, your turn, your opponent's turn, your opponent's like trying to top deck and you just like, <laughs> it's like the only way you can really utilize that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bird flap. Yeah. Oh. They come in for the clap, baby. We're all, always playing birds, whether it's Flunder or Larisic, Lyralisk. How do you actually say that? Because I've been getting teased for this shit. Like, uh, Lyralisk. Lyralisk. I keep calling Lyralisk. it Larisic for Lyralisk. some reason. Larisic, Larisic. Larisic. English is so oh. hard. I didn't know who Danny was talking about when he said Larisic. I thought, who is she? Damn. <laughs> <laughs> who is she? Mm. <laughs> But yeah, uh, the Flunder deck is going to be super interesting. Um, with Flunder also coming out, I also think that Strike is going to see a lot less play. I feel like Warning and Judgment are going to see a lot of play because Warning mostly does the same as Strike in terms of like effects that's special right now. Um, it's also really important to note that like if you like with you know with uh, Destroy Phoenix coming out, like if you have Strike, not really going to do as much. You gotta have the warning for like the fusion destiny. You hope they don't have another one or the judgment, right? Like if you strike the effect, they're gonna special again from the graveyard. Like you can utilize it to like negate the graveyard effect. Don't get me wrong, but at that point, warning kind of does the same thing. Wait, can't I just strike the graveyard effect when it tries to bring itself back? That's what I just said. Yeah, but then warning would do the exact same thing. It's so already it popped the card. Yeah, it's oh, already popped the card by that difference. point. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah, you just prevent it coming out, right? Yeah, you're right, you're right. Like, and even against Flunder too, right? Like, what are you going to do? Strike their effect when they're going to chain block, like, half the time? Like, I think that's where, that's where right now in Yu-Gi-Oh, it's this weird situation that we're in that normal summon has become so dependent. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, your there's, like, a lot of extenders. I think the Lyralist deck, it is a bit of an exception to that because of the bird call and being able to like special 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 like you special all the time right i think there is one point in that combo where you do need to normal summon the nerval that you had but like still like i think we're in in a format that or not a format but i don't know like normal summon is so important so i could see warning like going up or like you know being more viable just play, your normal just... summon tells so much about your hand you know what i mean yes it does it does like your normal like even if you think about like any deck try dragon link then yeah dragon link summon yeah. synchron or summon safer I mean, not really yeah. drytron that's Dry the only deck no drytron doesn't matter but like you still want that diviner summon yeah like it's nice so, to have exactly exactly so like your normal summon is like i think now your normal summon is always um important like your normal summon is never like set a card pass right or like anything like that like your normal summon is very very crucial to what how your board or how your combo is going to initiate like even when you stop diviner for example like that means you can't be a trist right that means like you can't um dump a card so like it, it is telling of how you know the rest of your turn is going to be mm -hmm. I think like even and, uh, another thing of Flunder is that the rarities, uh, like Tristan brought up, like he's just gonna bring it to locals because the one card is a secret, the field spell, the ultra, and the rest is common and super and like that's super relevant. And we've seen it with like Tri Brigade, like how the whole deck is cheap except Rescue Cat. And, but like, I also think that's relevant. They're all my favorite rarities, common yeah. and supers. So. <laughs> So. Except the field spell, except the field spell, Darren. <laughs> yeah, she shot. So, hey. big bird. 
Oh my god. god. Yo, just shut your, your mouth anywhere, right now, right? Darren. Hold up. Yo, hold up. Your tidying is best tidying, though. Okay, okay, Landon. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, well, um, <laughs> I might have to kick someone from this podcast real quick. <laughs> I just got to say, I just, I, just, oh, no. I, just, I just got to say, Landon, when Landon told me, he was like, Darren, I just got the highest rarity for tidying. I'm like, what, super? He's like, no, this. And he took a picture. I thought it was secret that he came to the tent. I'm like, oh, that's so cool. Tidying comes secret. He's like, no, it comes rare. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Get the shit out of my face. <laughs> I like to Beautiful. foil the names, not the card. Apparently, <laughs> he likes to see the background. He says he likes that. Oh it's yeah, clear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. I like to see the. I like to see the little chambers on the back. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, gold rare is the best rarity too. Let's be real here, guys. No, stop. Right, wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. But we which gold stuff. rare though? Which gold rare? Platinum for sure. <laughs> what? No. What? Stop. Stop it right now. All right. What's next? Shout out to Paul. We're talking about B Trooper. I'm out. Yo, okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, my. This one up? <laughs> <laughs> what did Tien do before? <laughs> yeah. Like, that's, so, Danny. Okay. So, it's so funny. Danny and I, back before when B Troopers first came out, we were supposed to test. And I kid you not, I sat for three hours listening to Danny talk about B Troopers and the entire time I'm just like, I'm like, guys, this deck just sucks. And then I end up like, in that time, I'm just like, like three hours nonstop. So I told Danny I would never talk about that deck again. And Konami, thank God they listened to me and made all that support shit. So thank you, Konami, <laughs> you listened to me. You listen to me, and you know what? You agree that B Troopers suck, so we're going to keep them at the bottom. End of discussion. We don't need to talk about this anymore. Next topic. Yeah, Next no, topic. like, the support was just so bad. Holy. Yeah, I'll, like, it was, it was like, you really gave us disappointing. A... They've yeah, done you, so much. You gave us a fusion monster that's almost impossible to sub it. <laughs> then you give us cards to help us make it, which are extenders. Like, what do they expect? Like, uh, for people to play DNA surgery and then super poly abort only? Like, what the fuck? Like, like they didn't even give us a fusion spell. Like, how like, they, we're just supposed to naturally polymerization this shit? Like, how they want, us to, they want us to parasite, parasite, put the card into our opponent's deck <laughs> remotely. So remotely, we would just go like, yo, take this card and put it in your deck. Yeah, yeah. Hey, can you and put one of your, like, side deck cards uh, face up? And, just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then when you draw it, then I'm just going to super poly your board. So... <laughs> No. Yeah, that's that's, that's all we I mean, got. We have a super poly target like five headed dragon for insects now. Like like no, the like, potential was there for B troopers, and then once they start releasing the like the cards, it just I was like, well, bro, what the like? It was like I don't know. It reminded me of like noble knights at first, right? Like Medra when yeah. like when, when Medra first came out, it was like, all right, you know, like you equip a spell, and then you get a free special sub, and I was like, okay, you know, like this guy actually has potential. Yeah. And then every support card after that was back. literally dog shit. Like yeah, there was like one good one, and that was what malice or what was the? It was the one. It, it was it was the one that's like spellbook of uh, whatever the fuck. Where you like when you equip and you reveal three or whatever. Its name was called Is Sold Two Table of the Noble Knights. Oh yeah 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 that one too yeah yeah I forgot <laughs> that that, I forgot that yeah that one that one's out, a bro. crazy noble knight yeah. <laughs> Oh, is it even for Noble Knight? But yeah, Infernal Noble yeah. Knight, yeah, Renard, yeah. Just... <laughs> I remember yeah. like even when that Noble came Knight out. Cards are very good, yeah. Noble. Like the the Noble Knight card that was a level four that special from hand was really good during like Teller Knights too. The one where you oh, control light, yeah, especially. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, because yeah, that was being teched in a lot too. Yeah, I did so that, that with my alias. Cool. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I remember. <laughs> and it's a warrior! Yeah. Like, Rota target? Hello? So you could like make it like a uh, heroic champion Excalibur? And you have to control yeah. a normal monster to do that. Wait, what? Either yeah, way, alias. alias works. I don't care. Yeah, alias, normal alias, and light. Fuck it's you guys. Or not. None of those are normal monsters. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, was, I was lying. I think I think You're like just kidding. Jokes on you. It's the orange juice. I'm sorry. I think it's oh. being made. Ah, yeah. 
I think the point that's being made is that we don't troopers need to are spend ass. Any yeah. more time? Yeah, we don't need yeah. to spend any more time. Uh, next, is that how we <laughs> jump on? Yeah. Unless contact or retaliating becomes insane in a format, I think it's the only time that deck will ever be relevant, stop, if any. Stop, All right. Stop. stop. Or, or, if, guys, or if they get like hella crazy support yeah. later on. Or yeah, they need like a debris dragon, like crazy support. They need a debris dragon. Bring back, they need. Or if they bring back a card called Maxi, the yeah. Just, Even then, yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah, like, would, what, like, would it make like B troopers a thing though? I mean, you get to search Max C. Yeah, but oh, you can do that combo. You neg yeah, like you search out for retaliating. <laughs> you search retaliating. You use it as part of the normal fodder. Search Max C every time. I know. Uh, no, you don't because then they go normal summon the effect. You're like Max C. You draw your own card and you're like, okay, attack, and then you draw and you can't do anything. Uh, can you like, imagine? Yo, using like, Sangha not only that, like you can't even play like Nib and like B troopers because like if you control the <laughs> fucking thing, like you're like, oh, you can oh, always yeah. summon insect monsters. You're like, oh, okay, well. <laughs> Yeah. Right, what's next? Yeah. What's next? So let's move on right, from, 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 guys, from, from shit troopers. Have you guys played the small world game? What? what? Small world game? Yes. No. Maybe. No. What? I've heard of the squid game. No. Never squid mind. Game? Okay. No. 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 Bring it up. Bring it up. <laughs> no. No. no tell, well, tell us about it. Okay. You guys talk about small world. I'll find the small world game and link it. Okay. Are you talking about the the one that searches by banishing like two cards face down? Yeah, card. that that's the card Tristan was talking about in Virtual World. Mm -hmm. All right, you, you can like wanna, you want to go? Yeah, ahead? like you can like banish one one of your like wins, I guess, face down, and then you can search Lulu or something. Like I thought that was pretty cool. Or like you can banish a level yeah, three. Card's really cool. I think and you go ahead. You get to banish a card from your hand, then you search a card. I think with the same level attribute with one. Or, yeah, with one of the following. It can only attribute. have one too. Oh what? Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. Okay. So the so card. Like, so so wait, hold on. Hold on. So the card text says: reveal one monster in your hand, and reveal one monster in your deck with the same type, attribute, level, attack, or defense. Only exactly one of these. Banish the first monster, which is the one you revealed in your hand, uh, face down. Then add to your hand one monster for your deck with the same type, uh, attribute, level, attack, or defense. Only exactly one as the second revealed monster. And if you do banish that second revealed monster face down, what the fuck? And then you get a third okay, one. <laughs> so, so to summarize this card, you banish a monster from your hand. Yeah. You banish a monster from your deck. And then, and you, then, and then you add, you add one. a monster yeah. from your deck that shares one thing and only one thing with yep. both of those cards. So the way, so, the way that you utilize it is that, um, <clears throat> and I think it's in Virtual World that two... Two of the small guys have like the same attack or defense, but they're all different types and attributes. Right? So then you go banish yeah, one, go into the other one, and then search for another. You, you can, can also like, use it like you can banish hand traps with it too, which makes the bridging yeah. a lot easier there. Yeah, it's also really it's like I know uh when this card first came out on OCG, people were talking about having like DD Crow as like the middle point. Because like having a zero zero makes it so like almost any card that you want to search. Is not gonna yeah, have those. Crow's those yeah, yeah, DD Crow's hundred. Oh, sorry, a hundred hundred, even better. I would know. Oh, I would. Then. I attack people with it. <laughs> <laughs> so you have like a hundred hundred. You have like a dark game or wing beast, right? You search for one of those that you need. The biggest thing in virtual world is uh, a lot of virtual worlds have six hundred defense, so you can banish yeah. a virtual world and then nib from deck. And nib doesn't share any characteristics with virtual world except for six hundred defense. Ooh. So you can basically just. You can just trade any virtual world in your hands by banishing a nib in your deck for a different one. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of the that's the bridge there. Very nice. Lulu F. Lulu F. I think that card is going to be kind of like the Cupid card. I think it won't do anything at the beginning, but it lets more people like start like investing their time in this next that's coming out and looking up like combos and stuff it'll probably be relevant at some point probably not early on though yeah. unless somebody already has like all the tech it's just gonna blow everybody out of the water you know or maybe they'll save it for the ycs who knows true true there is a ycs was in uh, december right yeah 11th i think and we're winning it yeah. damn CS dude well. that's like the weekend i go to cali fuck mm -hmm. it's okay just playing cali time. Jared, it's time for what? Round two, baby. Are you going for another YCS? Oh. We are, baby. Yo, except, except, except this time, you're getting first. Yeah, I signed up to judge this one as well. 
So I, as I get accepted, everybody will know, Dan, including my Twitch chat. Danny so, can watch me know. Cosmic Cyclone another. Uh, yeah, dude, that was crazy. Blizzard. Fucking Darren, his opponent Blizzard his quick launch, and he Cosmic Cycled the quick launch, and it's still resolved. I was like, what? Does that even work? And then, like the judges were like, no, nah, I don't think it works. Then we had to have like a whole discussion on it. And I got Darren's back because it does work. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Wait, hold yeah. on. What happened? Danny. What? <laughs> so Darren activated quick launch. His opponent blizzard the quick launch. We were and we were Darren five minutes cosmic away from time. cycloned. Five minutes away quick from time. Like 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 yes. is this car the card blizzard? Yes. Okay. It's yeah. a quick play spell. Yeah, 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 yeah. The target's one face up. Yeah, negate the yeah, okay. I had no play. I had no and you, play. And you cosmate your own Okay. <laughs> own. Quick launch. Yeah, and it won him the game because of it. It was and crazy. We were, I, I had no normal summons. My opponent, I had all hand traps, and my opponent literally goes set one pass. I talk deck the quick launch. I go slap down the quick launch. We have five minutes left. He goes blizzard. I go chain cosmic. It took like a 10 or 20 minute judge call. To yeah, we had a long discussion it. about it. It was nuts, but I need help from the chat because I don't know. Maybe people can let me know. Should I play for this YCS or not? I'm kind of like... Mm, Yo, don't be a bitch. Day. What the fuck? Exactly. Exactly what Tia had said. Listen to your code. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe like a legend too. Yo, you, I don't you, know. Yo, you can kick Darren out of the chat now. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. You know what? <laughs> No, I'll just, just kick him out of the server. It's okay. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't know. Of course, I want to come first place, but I don't know. That would be interesting. What do you don't Darren, know? You, you, what the you will not get first place if you get paired up against me. You just told <laughs> us that you've done the most testing and you don't want to play it on YCS? Hello? Uh, yeah. Yo, what about like all that go. talk about like the best deck and then Darren's like all prepped up and everything? Yeah, you, and you then, gotta, you gotta, you gotta and then look at this. Here. Oh. Drink, you gotta put representation like, where your mouth is, bro. I know, and now I'm like, yeah, let these people know. All this talk Chad. about how people can't play Dragon Link, right? And then this guy's like, no, nah, I don't know, I don't know, man. I don't know if I can play it the way he is. Yeah. I'll yeah, let you know. I'll know. let you. I'll let you know who called after this this podcast for you, Darren. <laughs> Chat, let me know what I should do if I should play the YCS. Sure, I will. <laughs> if not, if Fine, you guys think we should take a break, let's take a break. Oh my we'll god. See. All right, last time we had a Darren fun fact, but now we have a Tian fun fact, which is don't be a bitch. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> true, true. Don't be a little bitch. Bitch. Yeah. <laughs> fun fact. Uh, yeah. All right, what's next? What else we got, Sam? Room? We're doing uh we're doing market watch now. What do we think? I don't okay. keep up with the market. So. Okay, so so this is this topic is more this or less is a good like, topic for Danny. Yeah, so this is going to be and mostly idea. like and what yeah. side deck cards you guys think are going to see more play and increase in price, right? Because that's going to be a really huge aspect for y'all, right? Like you guys know like what side deck cards are going to be good, what's going to be insane, right? So those cards will probably go up in price. Maybe we've seen cards that we haven't seen before. Okay. And that, that could be a like discussion. Like Lightning Storms are already going back up. Are you ready for this? Exactly. Like Lightning Storms are already starting to go back up. Uh, token collectors already starting to go back up too. Because all right, let's see how much just token collectors about, are like, right now. Hold on. They hold just on. took the words out of my mouth. Lightning storm and token collector. Uh huh. I think I think token collector. Three rose dragon expensive. as well is a good card. Yeah. Right. But... So let's see. Token collector ultra rares. Yo, they're like nine dollars. Ten dollars for an ultra rare right now. Mm -hmm. Uh, even like the rares from Soul Fusion are like a couple bucks. Those spiked like, up a while ago. Like $1.50, yeah. $2. Yeah. Uh, I think when Sword Soul first got released in OCG. Yeah, the other card that... One card that's been going down a lot, especially like... Like, we talk about this the last two podcasts, is Crossout. They're sitting at like $50 now, <laughs> which time. last podcast, we were at like, what, like 70 80 Like, the card just keeps depreciating if value. If you want like, that card, get it now. Get that shit go. now. I would... I would yeah. fucking drop 50. It's, a 50 yeah, it's, it's not getting a reprint. Okay, so spell. like, oh okay, yeah, okay. <laughs> so there's like a couple listings for like 50, 52, and there's so, one person that has 78 copies at fifty-five dollars. So yeah, so oh roughly, uh, roughly about fifty-five dollars right now. Yeah, and um, I think like, again, agreeing with everybody. Now is the time. Like, 
If you miss out now, yeah. then I don't feel bad for you later. Yeah, for I real. think like this card would be like Desires. Same. You know how Desires was like 120 on release, dropped to 100, dropped to like 50, and then the card saw play in almost like every single deck all of a sudden and just like skyrocketed. It's also like, like one of those cards where like you go to a locals and you're like, man, I could probably fight cross out designators. People buy tins, but the people that have cross out designators won't move cross out designators. Exactly. They literally keep them. So you're literally not going to be able mm-hmm. to get a hold of cross outs unless you buy them. Right. It's exactly. similar to talents too. Yeah. Like even talents, everybody that pulls them, they're like people are buying tins to pull the cards that you want to see, right? Which are like and, cross out tactics or if they're looking for deck cores. And the thing is, is like if let's say by chance Konami hits talents, right? I mean mm-hmm. in OCG we've seen, I mean our call by is already at one. Uh, in OCG, their cross out is at two. So these cards being hit isn't something that's new to Konami. So, you know, one hit to to talent, and this card might be the next best thing, right? So I wouldn't sleep on it. And you know, they it's a tin promo. It's like Dragoon. It'll only go up, right? It can go more down. But like one hit to talent, which honestly, I think we all see talents eventually getting hit. So. Mm-hmm. I don't know how that card can remain unbanned. The other cards yeah. that have been going up, and I know um, me and T talked to us on Saturday, is the Dragulon card and the Nimron. Oh, yeah, yeah Draglubion or whatever. Yeah, both uh, of those cards have been going up. Uh, this is kind of also branching off the Sword Sword deck that was playing D-Shifter. <laughs> They're playing both those cards in there because it's, like, pretty good. Uh, these ones, so, right? Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, well, we'll drag, wait, 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 what's the Link Monster? There's no Link Monster. Oh, just, uh, never mind. It, 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 it looked blue at, like, a certain angle. It, yeah. it looks very blue in this light. I don't know why. Yeah, right? Yeah, that's why I was like, wait, what the fuck? Yeah, no, monster. I agree with you on that. Yeah. <laughs> I did think it was, yeah, I think, yeah, it was just, like, at the angle. So, yeah. I saw OCG using them before, and I thought it would be really popular here, and then they stopped using them. So I know the Grand Maju deck plays it because like you can do yeah oh yeah with big like, shenanigans yeah yo actually Clear World and or whatever this uh this card we're talking about Mom. in Grand Maju actually seems really good because yeah. being able to banish two face down right and just like have a way to access Grand Maju by like banishing Ash as like your middle point is pretty yes. good. <laughs> yeah. Last time you Grand Maju players. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you can let's not give them more fuel to talk about because, like, I'm sorry. Oh, and then D Shifter's using Maju. another deck, dude. I'm telling you, D Shifter, nice. If you play Grand Maju, I have no respect for you. Oh, all right, Darren, let's oh, play uh, now. Where, where's Harvey? Oh, 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 another card that's gone up is Dagda, too. Because oh, uh, right. last week in OCG, they revealed that they were using Dagda with Scythe and they were using Phoenix Enforcer, or sorry. Destroy, destroy phoenix, phoenix to pop yeah. the the scythe and itself to be able to utilize uh to play around dark ruler because a lot more decks are starting to see dark ruler in ocg so they started using that yep. because regardless they still have like the trap cards from the pk they still have a follow-up like they get phoenix enforcer sorry oh, god damn it the destroy phoenix next turn anyways so like I I think that card might go down. I don't know if it's going to see that much play here. Because I feel like more people here are going to be playing like Droplet because it's going to be printed, right? Some people might even start playing Chalice. Because Chalice could start seeing play, right? Like against the Lyralis deck, you can do it on the Utopic Future, but you can't do it on the Compulse. Um, another card that I think is going to go up in price is Alpha Master of the Beast. Because that's a one card out to the whole uh, the whole Lyristic Tribrigade board. Because most of their boards, right, if, like, right now, like, we already know, like, with the Tribrigate version that we're playing, like, we have a way to play out of it. But even then, right, like, they're able to special attack over the Compulse. Because if they can keep compulsing it, you just special it because it's inherit. So it keeps happening over and over and over again. So it doesn't matter. You attack over it, and then you beat out the Utopic feature, and then you have to only deal with whatever the Tribrigate stuff, like, brought out. And most of the time, they're not able to utilize their revolt because they have to have their XCs on the far left and far right, and they only have three, and they're not able to make a link two and get it in a graveyard very easily. So, interesting. That card's gonna be good. It's also good against Flunderies because the bot, the penguin says monsters in attack position can activate their effects. So you special in defense, and you can still bounce it. So, and, and unless they have the trap card that lets them normal summon or the field spell, they can't get another penguin out on the field. 
Um, and even if they do, won't you they use special offer. To, won't they be able to just have win statue on the field? I get some thundery stack? Yes. Dude, don't they normally end on that card? I have let people that. like go away from the statue. Yeah, because it's, it's more, more just like rise a big bird, and that's all they're playing. Yeah. Ah, okay. okay. Like most of the time. Yeah. About mm. thunder. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's also it's mostly barrier statue, rise a big bird, and then you'll also see um, what's the other one they're playing. Bro, do the, do the, how are they getting <laughs> statue? Are they searching off of like the level one or something? Are they able to? Yeah, yeah, you are. Oh, it's it's a level four lower. It's a level one. Level four lower. Oh, okay, bro. Speaking of right, uh... yeah, so what they do is they they summon the barrier, the wind barrier statue, um, to lock you out of uh, nibbing them if they plan on normal summoning a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, oh, they also can... Ryza? Oh no, I'm talking about barrier statue. No, TM is saying something about Ryza, oh. right? Oh, yeah, the but... the price on Ryza? They're getting bought out right now. Yep. Yeah. 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 Like the Megaton one is at 25 and then it goes up to like 40 because there's only five listings. Holy. And there's only five <laughs> listings for the uh, Duelist Alliance one. And it goes from 35 to like $50. Oh my god. And I just picked one up for hella Another cheap. The card is uh, Crimson Blader Secret Rare. It's like $30. Oh, it's, well, it's because that's from uh, the 5Ds collection. Like, that wasn't like... Rare wow. to find. Yeah, yeah that, that, like, that whole set wasn't... Uh, Really open card, too much. That card in um, Sword Soul is interesting. The I other know people want to play, but against yeah. Sword Soul, yeah, yeah. The other card that's gone up in price against... for being like a promo and a gold rare is Nibiru has been going up a lot. Yeah, oh it's because everyone like, needs it. Yeah, like they're like, like twenty dollars a piece now. Yeah, for yeah, the gold, like, what, like ten fifteen. Yeah, they used to I'm be like, waiting yeah, for the commons. The, I'm oh, waiting for the tin ones are like twenty eight dollars right now, while the yeah, gold ones tw crazy. like twenty dollars, and then the ultis wow. are that is insane. One thirty, yeah. right? Uh, like no, the ultis are like one forty, one fifty right yeah, now. Like one forty, yeah. I remember when that tin came out, and those promos were all like five dollars. Yeah, it was crazy. Yeah, I tried to pick up yeah. as much as I could. I moved as many as I could. Dark rulers too were like so. Cheap. Yeah, common dark Just, rulers. Nobody are like was playing bucks. the card when it came out. Yeah, yeah, the commons right now, but like, yeah, the secrets. Yeah, the yeah, yeah, the, yeah the the tin one is uh fifteen dollars. Yeah, <laughs> for, so, that's, yeah that's for the thing. for the don't, tin promo. Don't sleep on um. Don't sleep on D shifter and like even like other cards in that thing like Monster Reborn for Jackie. Those secret cards are expensive to like they're like five bucks. You can sell them well. Altar cases. God cards too. The altar God cards. Are yeah, cool. yeah. So don't. Sleep oh, are they going up? Uh, cool. They're still like a dollar to two dollars. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, and they were like cents before, so. Yeah, literally. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Yeah, so next, you want to pick up like a set for a dollar? <laughs> you guys um, ready to get into some questions? Yeah, another one, Danny. Yeah, yeah. No, I think I think that's all the 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 cards I could really think that would go up in price. I mean, there's there's obvious cards like Sanctum, but you know those cards have probably already gone up. Don't know if it's going to see as much utility because Dagda already went up too, right? Like, dude, Beanie is uh, he oh yeah, two sure, yeah. Those are like ten bucks. Oh, really? Like Twenty, yeah. Mm -hmm. Good deck. Oh, Dex. We got our first question here from ENP. What are the best side deck options? Looking forward to Burst of Destiny. Sure, I'll tell you. Lancia, Gamma, Token Collector. Um, I think Locker, even Ghost Bell, right? Cycle Reader. I think Ghost Bell is always... It's good, at, it's good at some point, it's just not consistently good. and I think it's good against Evil Twin. I think mm -hmm. Ghost Bell is really good against Evil Twin. Um, just because if they tag out the big guy, you go there, bam, they don't get any, they don't get the draw, they don't get the pop, they don't get the damage, they don't get the extra level. They're, it's a lot. It's, it's also a lot. cost, yeah. Right. So, Even just hitting a Phoenix Enforcer Revolt is pretty relevant as well. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. AD Crow can also see play. You can AD even Crow, do it yeah, against the pretty Richard generic Richard. RFG, so. But, like, sorry, can you repeat the question, Sam? What was the exact question? Side deck cards. Yeah, so what are the best side deck cards um, going the into best. the mode of the duel? <laughs> oh, burst, okay. of destiny, burst, burst of Destiny. Burst of Destiny. So, so I almost the said thing. boat of the duelist. Yeah, boat of the duelist. <laughs> God damn it! That's funny. Yeah, I think the fact that they their question was what airs, what are the best? Um, you're maybe next time. It's like I don't know, because like again, everyone has different like everyone has def different definitions of best, right? Like, are you talking about locals? Are you talking about YCS? Are you talking about like? whatever um maybe Absolutely. if you can like maybe if you can send that question again ian and just like specify what exactly you're talking about are you talking about it from like a locals perspective a regionals perspective a ycs perspective because that'll give a little bit more clarity because like we just said like a whole bunch of cards but, but if, like yeah. go ahead yeah i think i think no. what he what he meant about the question was like what cards are in the side deck that impact that are more impactful with the, the cards in both coming out you know like like mm, what 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 fair. cards Good would you side deck it, I agree. you like what cards would you side deck against the decks coming out in both like evil twins right like we just said like that we just said below spell um we're talking about like flunder you can side lancia we're talking about like the mm -hmm. uh sword soul deck you can side like token collector yeah because uh when think, yeah when it comes to like locals like we can't really answer that for you unless we're at your locals right then like we can tell you like how many people are playing each decks and you know, like what the format is, who's winning, uh, like what you need to side against them. But locals exactly. wise, it's way different for each person. Cause like, for all I know, some yeah. person's locals could be flooded with uh, Phantom Knights and it's just all Phantom Knights. And then one could be like flooded with heroes randomly or Sky Strikers or some rogue ass deck. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and like, I think the way to look at it is because like Tian just said, we have so many decks this format. So, really when you're choosing your cards look for the most flexible but most impactful cards against a variety of decks not just one deck like i know like back in the day too people would be like oh you play like non-fusion area for shadals and it's like yeah but there's shadals ba like there's so much right i have something mind. to add to that actually so like it's like you're saying like that right like non-fusion area like a card that you don't know who plays bro so secret storm has nothing but wins right bro poisonous wins <laughs> no Isn't win must can be special summon bro oh no. oh it says you can't okay. special summon neither break is special summon wind monsters it's a continuous bro, spell bro, <laughs> my flunder deck is doing we're normal summon. Yeah. yeah 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 yo wasn't that like a counter to uh the was it magic specters Yep. Yeah, back in the day. So funny, dude. So funny. <laughs> Imagine Another playing that against the Larissic deck. Oh. Uh, the what? For this question, is that if your deck can interact with it as well. So, like, the thing with the Beatrice, the token collector, like, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. True. Yeah, True. that's definitely a good point. Like, how do the cards in your side deck complement your main deck? Um, and in what ways can you can you change it to do so? Um, going out on a limb here with this question, I'm going to assume he's talking about locals and a locals meta as we don't really have many big events besides like remote duels and such. Um, but I think when you are looking at a locals meta, like we were saying earlier, look around you, look what people are playing. I mean, there's probably going to be that guy in the room, you know, at your locals, the guy that everybody knows normally wins the locals, has the best deck, what have you. So if you end up playing them every week and you're not doing so hot, you know, look for cards that that could help you with that. You know, maybe dedicate a few more cards in your side deck to that. Yeah, like if your locals has an affinity player, you said spiritualism. No, yeah, that's, like that. that's the evil swarm player. That's the evil swarm player. <laughs> Dude, that that was crazy when you did it to me. That opened my <laughs> eyes. That opened my eyes to side decking, dude. So for I those can... of you guys that don't know the story behind this, so uh, back when I was a Yu-Gi-Oh scrub, uh, I we put, were both I, scrubs. Yeah. So Sam would always play in Frandy, and I would always lose to it. So one week I came in and I was like, you know what? I'm citing three of the spiritualism card because this just completely blows out Infernity. And you know who else was playing Infernity? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> So I was like, you know what? 
I'm gonna slide it. And I played Evil Storms, right? Sam like full combos <clears> me, and I'm like, yeah, like I can't afford maxis. Like <laughs> I just don't have anything. He like full combos. He goes pass, and I'm like, cool. <laughs> Spiritualism, your barrier. And he's like, you play that? And I was like, yeah, just for you. <laughs> And for people who don't know, Spiritualism bounces a spell or trap on the field, and then ni or it, it's a super poly card, so you can't respond. Yeah, it respond. can't, yeah. can't negate it. Yeah. can't be negated. Even if Imperial Orders face up, you can activate that and bounce. Oh, yeah. is that how it's worded? Yeah. That's mm -hmm. actually so... That's so weird that they word it that way, <laughs> but yeah, that's... That is the case. And now you can cite Spiritualism against Mystic Mind decks. <laughs> yeah, and then you bounce their you bounce their Mystic Mind while they have field barrier on the field, and then watch them cry. Exactly. But yeah, if if Ian does want to clarify, you know, if there is anything to clarify, or if we didn't answer it, you know, to your liking, let us know. Yeah. Were there any yeah. other questions? Oh yeah, we have a few, we have a few more. Go for it. Um, this next question is from Danny G. Will the uh, actually we kind of talked about this one already, but we can kind of go over it real quick. Will the decks coming out in Bode overcome the meta? Also, what do you think are going to be the best decks post Bode, if not the Bode decks? So what I think we're gonna see, like like I've uh, claimed before, is what we're gonna see is that they'll just join the meta because people are bored of the current decks. We've just been playing the current decks for so long. People are just going to want to play something new. So that's why I think that a lot of people are going to be playing like the stupid, uh, was it Sword Soul deck? Is just because like it's been really hyped up as like a really good deck coming out in this set. And people are bored of playing Drytron and Dragon Rulers. Or not Dragon Rulers, sorry, D Link. Dragon Rulers. Oh, I it's miss just, Dragon yeah. Rulers. I don't know. Towards the, end, Dragon Rulers. towards the end of formats, you always, there's always that. I think, yes. in my, from at least my point of view, like people want to play different decks. Or people All the play fun different. decks come out. Yeah, you know what I mean? But I think power-wise, like, it, it's not better than Dragon and Drytron. Like, n none of the decks coming out have a better engine, like a higher ceiling than those two decks. So yeah. I, they'll be part of the meta, like, sure, but it, I don't think they're better than Dragon or I think there's two ways to answer that question. So, okay, your first part is, you know, in testing that I've done with Tristan, Danny, and Landon, I would say post Bode. I think there is going to be some shakeups to the meta. How, how, you know, prevalent it's going to be, I don't know. But I think if I were to say my top decks of the format post Bode, uh, just off the top of my head, I think it's in no particular order. Dragon, Drytron, Try, and then you could put with Try, Try, Lyralisk. I think those two could be in third together. Um, Sword Believer. Soul with Sword Soul with Tenny and Blunder or Virtual World. I think like those will see you play. Wait, what did you say? What was the last virtual part? world? Virtual world and flunder in your like fifth okay. position, yeah. Flunder you, you almost got our, our real. Hey, you don't have evil twin on there. Flunder. I don't have evil twin on. Ooh, why do you say that? Because I have I have something to say off of this too. Because there's one card that stops that entire deck, which is Nibiru. <laughs> it like does not. Flunder. It does. If you if you have home, you can play around it. I think, well, that's dependent on. I've done it. Hand. I've done it to you. Not to me. I haven't seen it. I think. I think that deck is just too fragile. <laughs> he had his eyes closed. <laughs> he had his eyes closed while you were doing. Yeah, I did. I did. I was playing like this the entire time. Um, <laughs> no, I don't know. I don't think that deck is. I mean, no, Tristan. Last I time think... I remember, I I told you in those matches. I no, don't remember. I won. I won one of the matches last night. Don't be toxic like that. Oh, we tied. Matches. Okay, okay, okay. No, no, you won the last match, which put you up. But that was a game three. But still, Evil Twin... Wait, no, I didn't that play... Was try. I played that was Tri. That was Tri. When was we play say. Evil Twin, we're tied, I think. But I don't it's, see that's... But it's because of the hand trap. Well, no, because I, I remember how our games went. I went Normal Summon, you went Hot Ren, and I was like... Droplet, dump three cards, negate your board, summon, 
you know, I, like evil, it was just evil not evil twin. I I don't think evil twin will see as much play. So I'm not. I mean, you can put in your honorable mention. We'll do that. I think it's the new prank kids. It's a one. It's just a one card engine deck. That that's what yeah. it is. It's okay. just like a, a newer new version. I don't think like its power is like obviously there. Like there, I don't think there's anything powerful of, when you choose to play evil twin. You're not choosing power. You know yeah, what I mean? Consistency. You're choosing just like I want to do my one little thing my deck can do. But you know what's the issue? It's a one card combo. Yeah. Yeah. Is but the Phoenix Enforcer. Oh, sorry. Destroy Phoenix. Phoenix destroys you. It doesn't just blow your back out. There's yeah, no way. The only way you can out it is if you play Griffin. <laughs> Or you have to bell. make Griffin before stuff happens. Like, and you have to draw a bell. Yeah. Oh, in what deck? In the the twin, whatever. The twin. The evil twin. Yeah, evil, evil twin. twin. Yeah. I think, but yeah, like definitely those. I think the new decks will shape up. That I think the more that I started playing the new decks, I realized they will have some capacity of shaking up the format a bit, and especially because people will want to play new decks. I don't think people will know how to play the new decks right off the bat, so it won't see as much success. But the ones who are, who do play the deck regularly and who do play it well, um, you really have to master those decks. So we might have to wait till like the YCS to see some high representation. And then your second part? Those oh, that was a two. So the one was oh, okay. yes. The first part was yes to the question of will it change the meta? And then the second part was the top decks that I think. Landon, what do you think? Uh, I also agree with Darren. Uh, I just think like, I don't even think that the decks that are coming out are like even bad. Like, I just think they're better. I don't think that they're better than what we have, but I think they are like, they're, they're equally as they're, good. They're equal, you think? You think they're equal? I think they're equally as good. Those are some strong words, my friend. I'll let you. I'll let you have them. Yo, he's about to get fucking wrecked by Tristan after this podcast. You already know, Darren. I'm coming for you first. Don't forget, I got a phone call from someone. I gotta tell you who called. Mm, yeah, that's okay. why your deck didn't make the list. That's why your deck yeah. didn't make the list. My deck, bro. My deck didn't make the list. He said Tribrigade. You what? I don't know. I you were on honorable mention. What? 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 What, bro? T- tell that to my nerval, bro. <laughs> Uh, I think playing ultras, bro. Well, I had to pick between ultras and super, so I chose ultra. Duh, like what the oh fuck? Oh, we were playing OTS too. Wait, 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 time. that's prismatic, oh, yeah. right? Okay, bet. Yeah. Bet, 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 bet. Hell oh. yeah, brother. All right. So, yeah. So, what's the next question? Uh, we have one last question here. Um, oh. How do you think social media, YouTube and Twitch mostly, have developed the skill sets of the common player? Oh, that. Okay, so I can go on about this topic forever. So do it. Let's do it. Okay. Fuck it, dude. So my thing is, is what I think happens with YouTube and like Twitch and all these like new social media things compared to back in the day. What I have seen is that metas develop quicker. Um, they develop at a faster rate compared to when I was a kid. Cause like, rem- I remember when I was a kid, like formats would be like six months, right? Oh but, yeah, like, it was hell yeah, yeah, brother. And decks weren't figured out to literally the end of the format. But now like, oh, especially during this COVID area, bro, decks are getting figured out like quick. Like everyone's on the computer. Everyone's able to just get on online and try out a new deck idea. You know, like back in my day, uh, well, I won't say back in my day, but back when I was a kid, I would, you would have to get with groups of people to go out and test these ideas. You couldn't just like, oh, group messenger, you know what I mean? Like AOL or whatever it was. No, back then it was AOL. Skype, bro. Skype, that's what it was. Yeah, it was Skype. I remember Skype and AOI messenger. So, <laughs> yeah. And <laughs> funny, we're still doing Skype duels. Um, <laughs> Sorry, it's well, Discord. But that's yeah. what, um, but metas, but metas develop um, a lot faster. But what it's doing is affecting the player. Is like it gives people already like and a like it gives them a higher deck building level because back in the day, like you would have to read the articles and hope they post a deck list. If not, you try to like put the deck together through the article, and then Jeez. you know, yeah, and you know, you sometimes you'd even mess up, and then you'd have like people with like incomplete shitty decks. 
But now, like, they never have to worry about that because I can just YouTube what just got first place or I can just yeah. go on Twitter and see what just got first place or I can go on whatever and see what just got first place. So that's what I'm saying is, like, I think deck in the deck building um, aspect, deck building is better today for the average player because it's easier to find the deck lists. You know what I mean? Like, it's you can already have, like, the first 35 cards. You only got to change a little bit to battle whatever it is for the next event. Um you know what I mean? Like that, I think is like the biggest evolution with social media and medicine. I think, I think also like coaching it also brings another aspect, right? Like we didn't see like any Yu-Gi-Oh coaching like back in the day, right? Like we have that a lot more available now. Like you have like an easier route, like you Tristan was saying. Like there's so many like methods, like like Tristan was saying. You literally have so many outlets to be able to get an info. You, yeah, and you they, can even connect with players who are better than you a lot easier. Like, bro, mm -hmm. even when I was – like, we couldn't just Facebook and leave comments on someone's deck, you know what I mean, and expect an answer back. Like, in – and like especially back then but nowadays like oh yeah we're, we're all open for q a about our deck what do you want to know about it what do you want what matchups you want to know? and i'm like it's just such a weird difference um at least from my point I mean, of view even this podcast is even like an example of this well and, and yeah exactly like what landon said i think you know i remember it's funny one of the guys from my local shout out to raymond if he's watching this um so he approached me yesterday and he said oh i'm playing he goes darren i really like your dragon you know deck you got me sold on it he goes i he goes i mostly have like the core cards but i'm playing dragon mate right now and he goes i'm just so tired of losing and he's like so it was just and it was made me smile because like I think they showed like good progression of a player and he was like and the fact that he wasn't shy like I know some people are shy when they and that's why like for me if someone comes up to me um there's someone else who watches this channel too who always asks me questions and says really really nice things I actually need to shout him out because he's some some really really nice things um oh I don't maybe Danny would know his username is Stitch um oh Joe yeah, Joe. Joe Mama. So, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I just, I, you know, to everyone who does message me, like, thank you. And I appreciate it. And like, Joe, your comments were so kind the last time I read them. And like, you know, saying that, like, it was an inspiration or, you know, just like the kind words that you said to me, it really meant a lot. And I don't ever mean to be rude when I don't give advice to people, but it's just more so like what I'm trying to say, especially from the other video was like, don't be scared to do what you do because you know if you have good logic and reasoning behind it you know be confident in yourself right because like i don't want you to be me like you know if i'm just telling you everything what i'm doing then you're just replicating me right and doing the exact same so even with raymond i didn't he asked to see my list yesterday and i said no that i wouldn't show him because my team and i work on it and and they wouldn't allow me to show it either so it was just like a really nice like um way of like landon said like listen to this podcast i actually linked him to the podcast and he said he really enjoys watching it so yeah thank you to everyone and absolutely we use social media i use social media to get better i learn like combos and things like that db grinder is great i did an interview with him when i taught my ycs and i actually really enjoyed him he was he was informative he was good i really appreciate his channel so shout out to him so and uh watch his stuff yeah so like bouncing off of that um i know um me and sam were talking at next level we we're talking about like content creators um sam what was the other part of that again oh no i think it would be an interesting topic for us to just go around and say what content creators we do watch on youtube so darren you were just talking about db grinder um and yeah, i will GB. say yeah yeah go ahead T tell oh us sorry about yeah so sorry i was just gonna list them off so i really like db grinder i really like um shooping his lab you get a lab i think though it's really informative uh, it's also like this mix of, um, he does like a mix of like Eastern and Western Yu-Gi-Oh, like OCG Yu-Gi-Oh and TCG Yu-Gi-Oh. So I appreciate that. Um, who else is Cybers. there? I think, 
Yeah, disciples, of course. Yeah, yeah the disciples. <laughs> the disciples podcast is always good and informative. Uh, shout out to Gabriel Nets. I always like his opinions, even on Dragon Link, and I'm glad I was able to reach out to him and speak with him. Um, who else is there? I think for content wise, I think those two. And you know what? Like I was saying, if anyone is interested in like learning about card adventures and things like that, go watch old school Yu-Gi-Oh. Go watch like ARGs or go watch, um, you know, Joji Orlando history of Yu-Gi-Oh. Go watch, um, you know, a lot of these like older formats, like even SEMO, like, you know, I think everyone's entertained by progression series and things like that. So go watch those type of things. I think those things are like super fun while being informative at the same time. Watch our podcast, <laughs> of course. And yeah, those are the ones I would list. And interesting. Do you guys have anybody? Dan, you can go for it. Um, to add on to that list. Uh, I like Pac. Oh, like, right, right. Shout out to him. Yeah, Pac, I totally forgot yeah. he waxed me in the finals. Of course, Pac. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I didn't yeah. say anything. Let's get it. I'm so sorry. I'm Pac. Pac, are you watching? Yeah. That's Pac, why I don't shout on. him out. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. We gotta he wants his revenge at the next YCS. Pac, Money Pac, match yeah. right before. Pac, if you're watching this. Right before. If, if you're watching this, don't listen to them. Yeah, <laughs> don't listen to them. <laughs> I also really like Frozen Card Gaming. Uh, Absolutely. Like, FCG. Yeah, a lot of their combos are cool, like whenever new cards come out and they just discuss whatever. And uh, Grim YGO, I don't really watch him like for when he's discussing decks. I just watch like the profiles, like whenever mm-hmm. I'm just like cleaning my room or whatever, just to see what text people are playing and all that. And then, of course, DB Grinder. And uh, yeah. Pearson? Oh, uh, for YouTube, I, I kind of so I kind of view YouTube being kind of different. Like, I like I like watching only good content like towards competitive play. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm not a big fan of like the Simo channels or you know Gage or mm-hmm. Tom Box or like those. Like they're good channels for what they are, but mm-hmm. for me, it's just for the competitive side. It's just it's not what I'm looking for content wise. Yep, and um. And I think um, they do produce good content, but the ones that really attract my attention, like I, I do, I do like DB Grinder, but I do do think sometimes his commentary is very tunnel visioned um, mm-hmm. towards his opinion, which is normal, right? Because he's commentating yeah. what his thoughts of the game are. So obviously, sometimes, but um, like he, there's a, he, he gets to watch so many games of Yu-Gi-Oh. It's if you want to watch, like, the thing is, is if you ever want to watch what competitive DB players are doing, like, right this instant, you can just go on Dueling Book yourself. You don't need to go watch Dueling Book. Like, you know what I mean, DB Grinder. But you, there is good, like, you get to watch, like, Nash versus um, Carmano, which is Ryan. Or you get to go watch, you know, Cody Angeloff versus whatever, Deadly B7 versus, blah, blah. you know, it's really quality matches. You know, it's good players. Um Another person I like uh, recently who started a uh, YouTube is Deadly B7. I think mm-hmm. he does shorter content, um, and since I have a lower attention span, I think it's really um, good for what I'm looking for. Um, he gives a nice short little explanation. If you if you can, you should go watch the video on why he won't play uh, the Destiny Hero uh, Destroyer Phoenix Enforcer, whatever it's called, Destroyer Phoenix. Destroyer and Phoenix, yeah. yeah, he he explained why yeah, he won't play that. Enough in his dragon deck and he shows a replay um on why he doesn't and he explains it pretty well um another another one that uh i like is epic cards and games um i'm a big fan of the texas scene i'm uh and not that they show anything besides deck list but joey lynch is a really good player that i kind of i like to see like what decks he's kind of doing because i see him always grinding on db um as well um who else Obviously, I follow Pac. I the thing is that, like I said, like it's for me with Pac. It's only certain content. I, I don't really like Rogue. I don't like. I don't. It's it's the it's the competitive content. And finally, uh, someone that a lot of people probably don't watch is uh, Sir Eminent. I don't know if you guys have heard of that guy, but he he's kind of like us. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. um, he has a YCS top, and he's he's good. He's a good player. Uh, you know, and you kind of just see his uh, thought process. He talks a lot, a lot. And that's what I like because I actually get to feel like his whole thought process beside, between actions. 
Um, and he, it's very easy to talk to him about what's right and wrong, like uh, in the comments, because he's very open minded. So, um, yeah, Sir Eminent is a, one of my uh, other go tos. So those are the YouTubers that I kind of like go to the most. Uh, Twitch, I also go to um, Jake Quincy on Twitch because he just plays he plays at a really high level. So yeah, he's so good to watch play locals. The one aspect that a lot of people don't look into, and it's because a lot of people don't really utilize this, is I think Facebook is one of the craziest places to get deck lists yeah. in terms of like like random rogue decks that you don't expect and stuff. And that's really like where I like shine a lot because like I'm always looking at like Ready for Duel is a really big one. Um, and Ready for Duel even does like YouTube videos that have really good like informative, right? But it might not be like the most competitive standpoint, but it gives you like a scenery of like what the majority of people might start looking at and playing, right? Uh, Carluncho store on Facebook also posts a lot of deck lists. Um, you also have Italian Yu-Gi-Oh! They usually do reveals and sometimes they do deck lists. Um, and I think there was one other one. I'll have to check, but like that's where I get a lot of deck list ideas and a lot of like ideas a lot of people don't start seeing, right? There's these random deck lists that you may have never seen from a scene that nobody really knows about. And there's like random cards that come out, you know, and you never know like if they're actually going to be good or not. And that's your decision if you're going to take that into your own testing and do, you know, it's like the same thing with like looking at OCG deck lists. Like YG organization was really, really good up until last year of posting OCG deck lists every single week. But then, you know, COVID hit, they, they're, um, they're, they, they, they changed ownership and they also had a, um, their bot that they were using to gather deck lists, um, ended up breaking down and completely shutting down the way that they got deck lists. So they weren't able to. So now I think the, I think it's called Road of the King is the Road new place to, yeah, Road of the King mm -hmm. is now the new place to look at deck lists. So that's where I really look at a lot of my information from, um, uh, when I'm looking at like deck lists that people don't see, you know, um, and card text that people don't really know about cards that might actually be good one day um and again like i was saying and like kind of what darren was saying you know when you see something try it out you're not gonna know like what if the card's gonna be good or not if you don't try it right like don't believe that just because you saw it it's good it's the same thing here don't believe that just because you know it might be like a that's... random locals from like venezuela Bro, right that's, like, that's... like from bumfuck right but if you don't like tie it out for yourself you're not gonna get to it my, my biggest thing is like watch the deck profile because mm -hmm. like so many people like watch the deck profile but then they find like the the imager and they just copy the deck but it's like yeah exactly they, they talk about exactly what they didn't like about their deck and you just yeah. chose to like ignore it and you're just gonna double down on time for no reason you know what I mean? exactly the, the thing is is the things you choose plus the like weird things you choose you should already like be, you can theorize through half of them without even having yeah. to play with the OCG stuff, take it with a grain of salt and know, you know, it's nice to see how initial decks are built, but understand that their format's totally different. Use it as like a good structure. But, mm -hmm. you know, again, I think like when you're looking at things, like think about it, right? Like theorize first. And, you know, like theorizing is a whole different subcategory if you guys want us to do that. But, mm -hmm. you know, theorize about it make sure that it fits make sure it works go test it and then start playing it right mm -hmm. um yeah so yeah and everybody has their own way of theorizing mm -hmm. uh, so you can see it with us like we have four different ways of theorizing mm -hmm. when we're testing together um and you know we all bring it together bring all those theories together and you know there's always going to be like little like fights and stuff but it's what we actually take away from each other if we're actually going to you know like for example like for me there was there was a time when i played 45 all the time and i just took all their ideas and kind of put them together into a big list which is super incorrect you know and tristan was like the one to actually bring me to that realization because we had like a super personal talk about it <laughs> and oh. uh yeah and like yeah. i haven't i haven't played 45 since like the 200th ycs yeah, we already talked. We're good. Yeah. Yeah. But, wasn't that the time that you did really well? Hmm. 
Oh yeah, no. this was crazy. It's because it, it wasn't because of how many cards I had in my deck. It's because of so how I did. played around hand traps and just built the most broken deck. Yeah, but yeah, but the main thing is, is so did Tristan make you better or worse? Oh, <laughs> we, we, talk we didn't. We didn't talk. We didn't talk at two hundredth. We were on yeah. separate teams. No, yeah. I mean, but you did good. But after that, when you guys have talked and you haven't right. played forty five, yeah, yeah, we, 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 we talked. We talked right before like Portland and Pasadena, and I talked back to back YCSs. Yeah, he top ten. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. Well, okay. Stop playing forty five cards in his fucking salad deck. <laughs> whoa, whoa, no, no, no! I looked it up. I didn't play forty five at those events. But at Portland, you did. You played dangers with it. Remember? Yes, I remember that. I, I remember. Yeah, I thought it was like forty one before, and then you told me you were gonna add five cards to the main deck. <laughs> I was like, okay. Yeah, so I don't know if your theory of what the should... cards you added were too oh, dangerous. So are you saying that 45 is good for me now? Evenly. Am I going to have to go back? Hello? I'm, no, I'm, I'm saying your talk with hold Tristan. On, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Before I even go forward, Darren, how many cards did you play at the YCS? Got him, got him, checkmate, checkmate. <laughs> we got him boys play the goblin number 44 44 baby 44 oh god how did you get that's that? why that's why i bricked in the finals guys are crazy i think the ycs i topped i played 39 mm. that's best best yeah 39 optimal actually no now that i that i like kind of understand numbers a little better 39 is not correct i'm just saying like fuck all that. now he's a fan of 45 no, no, he's a man of forty-one and keeping his deck like forty. I'm a man of forty-two to forty-three now, though. I'll tell you that. Mm, so my give me some dry trunk cards. It'll be forty-three to forty-three cards. Two mm. Nova, two Nova, two mm. Nova, <laughs> triple Fafnir. Triple Fafnir. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, any other questions, or was that everything? Or actually, I Sam, TM, do, you guys, wraps us. Do, you, do you guys have anything on that? Do you guys like do watch like any socials? Do you guys have like friends that you guys talk to about like like testing and um, stuff? Or well, uh, a lot of the stuff that I watch was covered already. I will say it though. Um, I watch a lot of DB Grinder, and I <laughs> for like entertainment stuff. I watch progression series sometimes, but it's depression series at this point. It just makes me sad. <laughs> and then the fucking... Hey, I, have a I watch a lot that. of... Is Simo yeah, not the protagonist of that anime? Is Simo not the yeah, protagonist? It, he, he's the worst. He's the worst ever. He's a, I don't, I don't he's a, he's a sexy loser. He's a, he's a proud winner that slams his hands on the table when he activates Regeki for game. He's like just everything terrible about like salty Yu-Gi-Oh players, and I I just can't stand it. I just can't stand him. Like you're the only one out of the whole group that didn't get sponsored by Konami. Oh yeah, I think that you I know. know. That though, like, I don't know. <laughs> when you watch his stuff, it's funny if you guys have ever watched love you, Farfa. Simo. If you've ever watched like Farfa's version of it, it's hilarious yeah. just to hear him I do watch talk. Farfa sometimes. Like, Farfa's just a Farfa's just a straight oh, up totally. stand-up comedian no, bro, at this I point. He's like, why do clips, guys? We forgot the best YouTube. Oh clips. my god! Don't even get me started on why do clips, bro. <laughs> do you know why do why do clips? Oh Legends my god. god! I showed Legends Sam today, bro. I showed him both the videos. Bro, so they just clip everything from like every Yu-Gi-Oh player, and it's like hella yeah. hell funny. It's like and they've exposed context, me twice. <laughs> out of context, Daniel. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. Danny, it, it is Danny very was funny. like, Danny was pounding it hard, bro. Yeah. <laughs> like pounding it for like five, for like five minutes. He couldn't take any more. <laughs> yeah, and apparently I can't last five seconds either. Uh, <laughs> And his homegirl came in and fucked, or, wait, what was it? <laughs> yeah, what? it was ridiculous. <laughs> no, I took off sick hours because my homegirl was coming, okay? Yeah. Oh <laughs> that was the oh bit. <laughs> also, shout out to Landon because he was the first one to tell me. And I was like, no fucking know. shot. <laughs> Well, that was so know. funny. That clip was so good. <laughs> the next yeah. thing you know, he's like, he's like, uh, lightning goes to Danny. Danny, you're on Dueling Book, the first page. The one yeah, dude. He, he was on, he's like, we were streaming, and Lennon's like, dude, you're on the front page of Dueling Book. Dueling book. And I was like, oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, that's, that's the correct response. Oh, no. 
Um, if I do have to give one random shout out though, it's um, actually a Japanese YouTuber. His name is StarcrawTube. Um, he makes the best Infernity combos. That's it. Oh my God! Of course, <laughs> of course you would, Dan, Sam. What about you? I mean, you yeah, guys already you guys already so listed good. a bunch of the competitive ones that everyone watches, or well, I guess that we watch anyways. But mm -hmm. I also watch like me personally. I watch some of the market watches to see like what price of yeah. cards go because I like collecting cards and I like hustling. So money, 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 money. <laughs> but um, so who's, yeah. who's market watch? Who's market watch do you watch? I just watch everyone because like because like because. There's different cards and like some of them like might like give you an idea of like maybe there's a random card that like uh, you know like House of Champs might not cover or like M Cole doesn't cover right and so like what whichever ones I could find like most recent and just see if it like there's anything different about it like I'll skip through it I don't even care like I don't need their explanation right like I'll like I'll already oh, yeah, understand that's like that's, yeah that's something <laughs> I can just skip commentary I don't give a fuck dude just let me see you know price changes and stuff. Um, Unless it's like something weird, then like I need an explanation. I'd be like, "What the fuck do you guys need this for?" Like, uh, but you know, like market watch stuff. But I also watch a lot of like Japanese stuff. Um, just see like if there's any techs, uh, like tech cards that like anyone's like, it's just like see if we it could adapt to our meta, right? Or like see if uh, like we can actually just use it um, in our sideboard or something, or if it's gonna come up at one point. Uh, but also being a hero player, I watch a lot of hero decks, whether it's hero deck profiles here or hero deck profiles in japan i don't give a fuck you know let me see all the hero deck profiles i want to compare it. a lot of like a lot of people cut down increase down to one fuck that shit i've literally drawn increase in my goddamn opening hand almost all the fucking goddamn time and that's why i run two you know fuck all the one increase players <laughs> uh, yeah you're starting to imagine crazy with you here. i think they're right yeah, probably, uh, I mean, but you, uh, it's just my bad luck. So, that, I, yeah. I just think Ferris Ferris has aged badly. That card is like not great anymore. So if you draw the increase, you're fine. Unless you top deck Mally, right, Tian? No, no, no. <laughs> no yeah, yeah, unless you top deck Mally, then you like you like have Ferris in here. You're like, oh fuck, is there, well, what can I draw? It's like, oh Mally, hey look, Jr. <laughs> 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 fuck you, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Yeah, he and Ash's only play and then top deck Mali when he bricked two. <laughs> it was like, ah, oh, full combo, baby. Yeah, it's like normally it would be like the worst card to draw, right? You're just like, oh my like normally it'd be like the worst worst card. You'd be like, why the fuck did I just draw Mali here? But then like in my hand I'm like, oh I love you. <laughs> <laughs> and I think it's funny, back in the day when ABC first came out, I remember that's the reason I top of blue eyes. I would watch a lot of OCG videos to see what ABC did and how they played the deck. Right now, it's not so relevant because of COVID, and I don't think anyone's really showing it anymore. But like, if you do watch like which Sword Soul coming out, go watch like an OCG video to see what they do. Yeah. But again, take it with a grain of salt because Maxi. So, Yo, but like, it's kinda, oh, go ahead. It's kind of interesting that you're saying that too, because like more recently on like especially like on like stream and stuff i've been getting a lot of ocg players like coming in and watching our format because i think that you know like like we were saying earlier like all the ocg news is just gone like they they don't have any events like they used to they're like japan's still like shut down like <laughs> all of it's just crazy now they're kind of looking towards us to try to look for ideas because like they don't really have any tournaments right they're kind of looking at like oh what are they doing now you know and like even when I would post up like Road of the King, like the OCG players are coming, they're like, "Wow, I didn't even know OCG had something." We just always looked at YG organization, right? Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But for OCG, yeah, oh no, yeah, like, but like, uh, tag on to what Darren said about like watching OCG. I remember like back in the day, like before we got the separated ban lists, like people would look at what the OCG ban list was, and then you just tell what's gonna get hit because they're just gonna transfer over here. Um, mm -hmm. and then like before we got so many TCG exclusives, like the meta would also shift to the same way that Japan did. Um, exactly. Yeah. And so like back then, like if you didn't know about the OCG, then you were fucked. Right. While all the people were already mm -hmm. ahead because they already knew what mythic was going to be meta. Baby. Yo, mythic ruler. Oh my God. That regionals. Oh. It was literally me and one other guy that knew about mythic rulers and everyone else was still stuck on dragon rulers and they all got fucked. Because I just fucking slapped out a Felgrand. And they're just like, what the fuck does that card do? I'm like, it fucks you in the ass. Because you're playing Swiss Scarecrow instead of Battle Fader. 
man. That's funny. All right. I think we've reached the end. Uh, mm -hmm. But before we end off, uh, we would always like to do at the very end, we like to do shout outs. Uh, Sam, you want to take this away? Yeah. Thanks for watching Genesis Podcast Episode 3, guys. We appreciated having you on. Um, first of all, let me get a shout out here to some of our sponsors. Um, Danny, go yeah. ahead. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so shout out to Imperium Duelist, you know, always uh, our sponsor. Shout out to our partner, Celestial Gaming. Uh, sh shout out to Genesis, of course. You know, our team owners, they do so much for us. You know, they put in a lot of effort. Yeah, check out the new Imperium deck boxes. You already know. Yeah, it's sold out already, but you know, this is what it looks like, you know, yeah. for the people yeah. that don't have it. Yo, fuck you. Go into uh, TNT too late. Box. Yeah. Yo, actually, yeah. I, I, do, I do have an extra sealed one. Oh, I bought two okay. just in case. Yes. I knew it was going to sell Imperium out. also has these cool sleeves that you guys can get there. They're like the DT sleeves and the extra deck sleeves that you guys can get. I don't know if the camera is going to want to show it, but <laughs> uh, they're pretty sick. Uh, so they have like these like DT sleeves. Not really visible because yeah, my camera is on the white light. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Oh, maybe. maybe? Oh, that's there you too go. shiny. Oh. There we go. Yes, sir. Yes, we're seeing yeah. that. Off and then they have like the podcast. We are seeing these sleeves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you have these uh, over sleeves. Uh, I personally want to give a huge shout out to my Twitch chat who has been coming in and asking a lot of these questions uh, for their continued support and even supporting like when we do like team testing sessions. Like they've been coming in asking us questions. You know, Darren's gotten all the compliments from Joe. Uh, shout out to Ian. Shout out to everybody in chat who comes in. Um, and my final shout out that I want to give. Uh, shout out to my boys, the Lakers, because they won today. Shout out to Mello. Put up 28 points, bro. Let's go. <laughs> well, guys, anyways, thanks for coming. We Sorry. appreciate it. <laughs> all right. See you anything? What? No, I'm good. I mean, you guys covered it all. Unless anyone else has uh, any other shout outs they want to give. Thank you to everyone, right, Danny said, yeah. Yo, but, yeah. Well, I mean, shout, shout out to the team. Endeavor. You know, they're, they're, they're working hard. Uh, they're always testing. They're always theorizing. They're always coming up with crazy-ass ideas. And I mean, sure, they argue a lot about decks and which one's the best. And Tristan always bouncing around from one deck to another. You know, who fucking knows oh, what deck he's going to play <laughs> next? I don't even fucking oh, know anymore. He's like, yo, dude, Drytron? <laughs> yeah, dude, this thing is Wettron right now. And the next thing we know is, like, Tri Brigade. And I was like... Next thing I know, he's going to be playing fucking Flunderies or something. I don't fucking know what he's playing anymore. Evil Twin. Dude, that, we yeah, just listed four yeah. decks that he's done in the four Yeah, dude, Evil Twin. Week, and so then, guys, like, yo, next thing, the yeah, next thing I know, he's going to be like, <laughs> yo, TN, let me borrow some hero cards because I'm going to play heroes. I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with you, dude? <laughs> you know how I get. You know how I get. <laughs> yo, but you already know we play uh, max dude. rarity only. <laughs> fuck Starlight Rare uh, Stratos because that shit looks ugly, but ugly compared to my <laughs> ulties. <laughs> I'm still gonna get a playset because I, you know, I need it. But you know, <laughs> fuck. Oh what the hell god. are you showing, dude? That shit's too bright, Daniel. What the? F Mellow what? baby. Oh, god, oh my god. I'm, I'm just happy oh we god. got our first win of the season, bro. I'm sorry. Oh my god. Shoutouts, <laughs> shout outs in case we don't speak to you guys. Shoutouts to Halloween being next week as yes, well. Yes, Yo, and true. Yeah. This kind of being like our Halloween episode. Spooky. And uh, yeah. All right. And thanks, anyways, guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.